Welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. This week, City Hall is in the house. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti is here. He presides over one of America's greatest cities, but is he now getting ready to go national? The issue is homelessness, traffic, and those controversial new motorized scooters. Also, the issue is Russia. The question we have to keep asking, what's up with Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump? On our panel, legendary political campaign veteran Bob Shrum, civil rights attorney and activist Areva Martin, and KFI Radio's Tim Conway Jr. Ding dong! The issue is starts right now. And welcome, I'm Alex Michelson, and joining us, the mayor of Los Angeles, the Honorable Eric Garcetti, is with us in the house tonight. And Mayor Garcetti is here to announce that he's running for... Um, you know, maybe three to four miles whenever I go for a jog, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> Depends I, how I'm feeling. Yeah, right? so I mean, why not say you're running for president? I, I've told people I'm thinking about it, but the, my honest answer is I don't know. Um, I'm so passionate about this city. I'm so concerned about this country right now. And if I can help L.A. more and if I can contribute something, I hope all patriots in America are looking at what they're going to do this election year and in 2020 to really turn this country around. What will make you know? I think it's always an intensely personal decision. Every time I've ever run, family conversations, can I add something to the conversation? And I, can I do more for the people that I represent by running for something else as well? You know, uh, uh, your travel has been interesting. Yeah. You've gone to Iowa, you've gone to New Hampshire, you've gone to South Carolina, which yeah. of course are all some of the early primary states. And one of the questions that's been raised about that is how much is that costing oh. taxpayers? The LA Times is actually sued yep. because they're saying they're not getting enough information to answer that. What do, yeah. you, what do you say? Well, I think that's about my security detail. I always defer because that comes from the Los Angeles Police Department to their existing policy for many mayors, which is to keep that private. But I'll tell you for myself, whenever any political trip is undertaken, that's not taxpayer dollars. I pay for that. It's a lot less frequent than you'd think. I think it's been four days this year, for instance, on political trips. But I do travel for the job of mayor. If you did run, you would be yep. running against President Trump, presumably. Yep. Um, this week, so much news about Russia. Do you think that Vladimir Putin owns Donald Trump? Well, he certainly acts that way. Um, and I think vice versa. It seems like Donald Trump is scared of something that, about Putin. Uh, it was a bizarre and surreal week for American democracy. I mean, we have never had a president offer up ex-ambassadors to a foreign country. You've never had somebody say, well, my intelligence uh, officials all say one thing, but I believe the other guy. I mean, that is, I don't care what party you are, and you had a lot of Republicans speak out about that. That is un-American. Let's talk for a moment about temperament. Yeah. Uh, you're known as, as a really nice guy. You've always been nice to me. Yeah. Donald Trump's always been nice to me, too, I have to say. <laughs> um, but, and you're also an intellectual, a Rhodes Scholar. Donald Trump often, you know, throws pretty hard elbows, yeah. really intense attacks on Twitter, yeah. and he's really attacked nice person after yeah. nice person, he's getting his way. He's getting right. his agenda uh, uh, passed. If you were to run against him, what's to say that he wouldn't just mow you down? Oh, there's no question he's a bully with people who act nice or people who try to fight him. But I think you have to bring him down to size. This is a man How who, do you do that? Well, you know, remember when Hillary Clinton, in the debate, he came behind her and she kind of tensed up and stuff? And she fought back kind of, but you could tell he got under her skin. I think somebody needs to turn around, laugh at him, tell him to go back to his corner. This is a guy who has no experience running government. It's showing. He doesn't have any plan. He has private conversations that he doesn't inform the American people. He's never said he's for democracy, so don't get bothered. You know, we've, we've never had a mayor become president yeah. straight up. We never had a businessman reality show right. guy <laughs> become president either. But we have had many California governors become president. We had, uh, you met with Gavin Newsom recently. Yeah. Why didn't you run for that? Why not run for California governor? You know, I'm passionate about Los Angeles, and I looked at California, and I don't want to run for things just because it's the next step up. So my wife said, look, if you're a calculating person, and Eric, you'd run for governor next last right. year. She said, you're not, you believe in what you do, and you know, wives are usually right. Okay, <laughs> that, yeah, usually the women listen to them. Um, uh, but one of the big challenges in Los Angeles undoubtedly is yeah. homelessness, something Absolutely. that you've said. The LA Times put out an editorial where it said, Dear Iowa voters, before supporting Eric Garcetti in 2020, visit LA's homeless encampments. Yes. So what do you say to critics who say, you've been a failure when it comes to homelessness? Well, look, the failure on homelessness is decades in the making, and everybody can point fingers to the public uh, who have said no to housing, uh, government officials, the county is the pr primary um, solver of homelessness. But I took responsibility day one on this job, and I'm very proud of Los Angeles. We passed the two largest homelessness measures in U.S. history. That money is just starting to come online. We had the first dip in nine years. Uh, it is a moral and humanitarian crisis, and I would welcome a national conversation on that because it's not unique to L.A. Did you know that in Washington there's more homeless per capita in our nation? 
nation's capital. But it's worse here than in most places. We've got 31,000 homeless people, according mm -hmm. to the account. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, there, the, one of the things you've been trying to do, there's this El Pueblo, mm -hmm. uh, where you're trying to build essentially. Near Olvera Street. Yeah, yep. mm -hmm. build housing, temporary housing. Yep. That's cost already $2.7 million, $700,000 to build a deck there. 45 yeah. people are going to go there. I mean, is that the model? Absolutely it is. Uh, remember, those are 45 beds. They'll recycle yeah. three or four times a year and be there for three years. So you're talking about hundreds of people. And if you want people to come off the street, you can't just stick them in warehouses. You can't just stick them in a bed. No services, not allowed to bring their pets, no three meals. Where are people going to eat? Where are they going to have conversations with their therapist? How are they going to get into anti-addiction um, you know, treatment? That is how we do it. And it's much more expensive to wait and say, okay, I'll save money and keep them on the street. We've tried that yeah. for decades, and I refuse, refuse to continue the status quo. Uh, let's also talk about traffic, one of the other big Absolutely. intractable problems. I mean, is there really anything you can do on a big level yeah. to really fix this besides sort of the, the, the minor takes at it? There's no silver bullet, but it's no longer minor takes, and I don't think we've done enough in the past. Yeah. Why didn't we get you know, rail to the airport? I changed that. Why just one subway? Well, now we're looking at 15 rail lines thanks to Measure M. That's the largest transportation initiative in the nation's history times two. Will I see it in the next year? Of course not. Those things take a few years to get built. But it's also about the technology that's coming. Interconnected cars, uh, new modes of transit. I know you had the, the uh, electric scooters that are all over the city. Let's talk about some of those scooters. You got yes. bird scooters, lime scooters out there. They're everywhere. People love them, yep. uh, but most people aren't wearing helmets. Yeah. And then they just leave them lying in the middle of the street. Right. I mean, does this need more regulation? I think it doesn't need regulation necessarily, although we are developing standards with these companies. I want to be the kind of city that says yes to new technologies, that says yes to great new companies. This is based here. But also remind people, you should be wearing a helmet. You should make sure that you know folks that are under 16 aren't out there in the middle of traffic. Um, but I think it's really exciting. It shows LA, which has more tech jobs than anywhere in the country, is innovating. I'd rather get to yes, but we did sit down with them and say, look, don't just dump them all over the sidewalk. Let's figure out those standards together. Don't make us regulate you. Let's see if we can come to an agreement together. And that, those are the negotiations underway. But what happens when somebody gets hit not wearing a helmet? We are seeing a lot of accidents coming at the emergency room. So, you know, I know that, for instance, one of them offers free helmets, bird. Uh, people should avail themselves of that. It might require a state law, the same way we do for motorcycles at some point. But I, what I, you know, when I came in, people were saying, kill off Uber and Lyft. Well, thank goodness I didn't. I mean, they've been an asset to this city. Uh, they've been helpful to folks. Um, we've made money off them in the airport. I think what people need to do is listen, not say that they have all the answers, and government, vice versa, not overregulate. What do you view as your greatest success as mayor and your greatest challenge or your greatest problem? Well, I think, no question, the greatest challenge is our housing crisis. Homelessness is the manifestation of that. We need to build more housing. But the greatest success has been to the comeback of L.A. This is one of our great decades. More tourists, more cargo, more jobs than we've ever had in our history. More people coming to LAX than ever before. Finally getting rail to LAX. The Olympics coming. Two new football teams. But we're doing this work with a conscience. Okay. Uh, we, we like to have some fun on this show, Good. too. So we want to get, we wanna get to know you. Um, this segment is called Personal Issues. So we got some questions. We got 30 seconds on the okay. clock. And uh, here we go. Uh -huh. Favorite movie? Um, airplane. Favorite Olympic sport? Um, uh, rhythmic gymnastics. Really? Uh, <laughs> best LA hot dog. <laughs> Actually, it's rowing. Yeah. Um, best LA hot dog? Uh, pinks. Okay. Sure. Favorite karaoke song? Um, to all the girls I've loved before. Oh, nice. Because you do two voices. Least you know? favorite freeway? Uh, least favorite freeway? The two, it just ends there and doesn't go anywhere. Okay. Rams or Chargers? Rams, till day I die. Okay. Favorite book? Well, I like the Chargers, and thanks yeah. uh, for their support. <laughs> favorite book, uh, What It Takes, the best description of a presidential campaign, 1988. Yeah. What It Takes. And what, who's your role model? My role model in politics or yeah. in life? In I life. Mean, I think my, my parents are my role model, uh, for sure, in life. Um, uh, and I have to say this, uh, my wife, uh, yeah. she is somebody who grew up without a lot, and I met her when we rode scholars together. She is an amazing woman. And one thing that your dad, Gil Garcetti, yeah. uh, who of course a lot of people know, the former uh -huh. district attorney, uh, and you have in common is your love of photography. Yes. Uh, and we've got some of your, your pictures that we wanted Ooh. to show as well. Follow at Eric Garcetti to see some of these. What is it about photography that you love so much? You know, my grandfather, who's an immigrant from Mexico, was an amateur photographer. My dad is now a professional photographer. What I love to do is usually have politicians' Instagram accounts are like, look at me cutting another ribbon. I like to actually show the L.A. that I know and love. I'm a fourth-generation Angelino. It's just kind of my creative outlet. And 
the way the, the city lays out like a bed of jewels at night or crazy things I come across. Um, I like showing people the perspective from the mayor, not pictures of the mayor. Another thing that you're good at is music. A lot of people yeah. may not know this. Absolutely. And you've even played with Moby before. Take I a have. look at this. Uh oh. <laughs> so what's that about? I thought I was going to go into music. My grandparents met as a pianist in music school. My mom plays. My daughter's now playing. I have a piano in my office. I love jazz. I love composing. Um, it is definitely my creative outlet in LA, you know? Well, we've got a bit of a surprise for you. We uh -oh. didn't tell you this ahead of time, but our house band from Good Day LA earlier left their piano behind. So if nice. you come over Let's do it. Uh, with us over here, awesome. we're going to change, uh, change up the lights a bit. Oh, I can see it now. Yeah. <laughs> And would you mind uh, do, doing the honors and, and playing us? Because usually we have somebody, uh, music going to break. All right. Why not do it live this time? Let's do it. And thanks for watching The Issue Is. There we go. <laughs> this is a little song I've been working on. Actually, it's called Central Avenue, after the Central Avenue jazz. Uh, Andy Newman singing the unofficial theme song of the city as we look at this beautiful nighttime shot of Mayor Eric Garcetti's iconic office building at City Hall. And here to discuss, among other things, our interview with the mayor, our panel of pundits, USC's Bob Shrum, a veteran of several Democratic presidential campaigns, attorney and activist Ariva Martin, the author of the book, Make It Rain, out now, and KFI Radio's always colorful host, Tim Conway Jr., Thank Ding Dong! So Ding Dong with you, let's go! Let's go, so we just had the mayor on, what do you think? How do you do, Ariva? Uh, I think he did an outstanding job. He, he's obviously very poised. He's very comfortable with these kinds of interviews. He's thought a lot about the question he's always getting, which is, are you running for president? And I think he answered it well. He pivoted to you know, national topics, health care, uh, homelessness that's impacting Americans all over the country, and you know, took the conversation away from what we here in California, and particularly LA County, are dealing with, which is this really uptick in homelessness. So, but he's, but he's unflappable. Yes. I mean, you put some tough questions to him about homelessness, traffic. He's totally unflappable. And as I look at him as a potential presidential candidate, I'd say he's going to handle himself very well yes. if he does this. Well, look, the Gil real Garcetti, his dad gave him a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's, Trump beat the, the Clinton machine, the Bush machine, and the Obamas, all of them. And he thinks that he's going to beat the Trump organization because he got a lot of confidence from Gil Garcetti, his dad. I didn't. Uh, I pitched a no-hitter when I was in sixth grade. I went home and told my dad I pitched a no-hitter, and he sat me down and he said, you're not that good. <laughs> well, despite all of the positive things about Garcetti, let's not lose sight of the fact that there's been no mayor in the history of the country that has successfully uh, you know, run and become right. president. Tim, how big of an issue, though, is Skid Row and the homelessness crisis in this city? I mean, couldn't the ad be images of Skid Row sure. and saying, do we want your city to look like this city? Well, absolutely. I mean, look, the, the, uh, the homeless problem is huge, and the $2.7 million they spent on 45 beds with a $700,000 deck is going to come back to bite him. You know, this misuse of money, even though I, I personally like the guy, we had sort of like the same upbringing, uh, the misuse of that cash and constantly raising money for homeless, homelessness and then finding no areas of Los Angeles to put these uh, buildings. And no, they don't want them in Koreatown, they don't want them on the west side, nobody wants them. The president was asked this week who he would most want to run against, and this is what he said to CBS News. Joe Biden says he'll make a decision by January. Well, I, I, dream, I dream about Biden. That's a dream. Look, Joe Biden uh, ran three times. He never got more than 1%. And President Obama took him out of the garbage heap, and everybody was shocked that he did. <laughs> Bob, yeah. well, first, he, ought, Biden, first, first, he, first yeah. he, ought, he ought to be careful what he wishes for. Yeah. By the way, the key, and this goes back to Garcetti, too, and goes to one of the questions you asked. If he runs, he's going to have to spend a ton of time in Iowa. He's going to have to spend yeah. a ton of time in New Hampshire, because those are the places where people first get tested. And if you don't get your ticket punched there, you're not going to make it beyond there. And that means the LA Times will keep saying, 
how many days are you out of the city, the city. and how yeah, much is right. this stuff costing? So, so around the horn, who do you think would be the strongest Democratic presidential candidate to run against Donald Trump? Tim. Uh, the strongest one, I think, would be Bernie Sanders. Uh, he's had a, a tremendous amount of support. I even uh, supported him, and I've uh, never really voted for anybody in that party. My choices time. are a Biden-Harris ticket, one or two. You can flip it either way. Uh, it's going to be Joe Biden or it's going to be someone from this new generation. And I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't tell you how to sort that out. Fifteen people on a debate stage. It's yeah. going to be unbelievable. Yeah, it's going to be, be great. It's, it's the exact it's opposite of what no happened. Fun for us in this, this time around. Up next, what's up with President Trump and President Putin? Our panel is going to talk about that when we come back. And uh, this song is maybe appropriate for this week. <laughs> <laughs> what a week. Uh, it is been back, back in the U.S. Week. Back in the U.S. Back in the U.S. Is from Russia with love. From Russia with love, this week we've seen several dramatic covers featuring President Trump's unusually close relationship with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Now there could be a Trump Putin Oval Office summit. What's that about? Let's talk about that with our panel Bob Shrum, Ariva Martin, Tim Conway Jr. What is up with President Trump and President Putin? Uh, he obviously wants to get along with him. Obviously, likes him in a way that everybody in the U.S. government has told him not to like him, uh, sat down with him one-on-one, -on -one, uh, and we ended up yesterday with the extraordinary moment when Andrea Mitchell asked, told Dan Coates, yes. looking down at her Twitter. Breaking but, news. Breaking news. <laughs> by the way, there's going to be a summit in November, and yeah. he was totally disbelieving. I yeah, think but but they've always been telling him what to do and what not to do, and it never works. He just runs, he does whatever he wants. Yeah, but when you're getting to nuclear war and Syria and some of these big issues, you actually need to listen to the people who know what they're talking about. No, and what disturbed me the most about the whole week was this, it's an incredible idea, when Putin suggested that 12 Americans be sent to Russia to be interrogated by Russian officials and that somehow these uh, Russian intelligence agents would help special counsel <laughs> Mueller interview these 12 indicted Russian operatives. So the, that is so, just outrageous. So the question everybody has is, what is really going on? What, what is really going on? I don't think we know what's really going on. That's what's so disturbing about these private meetings that they've held. Uh, we don't know what Vladimir Putin has on Donald Trump. That is yet to be revealed. We do know that our intelligence agencies have information that, you know, is unequivocal that Russia directed its you know operatives to interfere in the 2016 election and Donald Trump won't accept it because he thinks it delegitimizes his presence Tim, presidency you, you're more on the conservative side you Thank talk you. to people on the conservative side all the time on right. your show are you concerned about this uh, I'm not really concerned I think it's disingenuous for all these Republicans to to get down on him and down on Russia because they're very happy the Republicans are very happy that he has two conservative Supreme Court picks. Wow. All right, let's talk for a moment about California politics when we come back. And the question is, could California Senator D Dianne Feinstein actually lose her race? Our panel has more on that. Still to come. Like little like Maroon 5. I know that's your favorite band, right, Bob? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got great music here. You said you do. Thank you. you think the music? Yeah. That's great. The Issue Is is available as a podcast. You can hear all of our past episodes. Just search for The Issue Is wherever you stream your podcasts. This Sunday on our sister show, Fox 11 In-Depth, host Hal Eisner welcomes California State Senator Kevin DeLeon, who just won a stunning endorsement from the state's Democratic Party in his race to defeat incumbent Senator Dianne Feinstein. Seniority means nothing if you don't use your seniority to defend our values, to defend our people, to defend our beliefs in California. And that's why I think we need bold leadership in Washington. So are you calling her a failure? Well, what I'm saying is that we need that bold leadership in Washington. 50 years as a politician is, is much too long. You can see the entire interview with Kevin DeLeon on Fox 11 In-Depth, hosted by Hal Eisner. That's Sunday at 9 a.m. So around the table real quick, does uh, Kevin DeLeon have a realistic shot at beating Senator Feinstein, Bob? Uh, very unlikely. And by the way, most Democrats in the state have never heard of the executive committee of the Democratic Party. <laughs> and I, I mean, it's going to help him a little. It keeps his candidacy alive. But he's got to raise a lot of money. 
and really somehow or other come up with a message that pushes off against her? My answer is no. Yeah. Yes. I hope he wins. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Is that all right. hope or will? He's far left. I hope he wins by a landslide. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't have a chance. <laughs> Diane is still so beloved in this state. That's all for this week, but we have a little bit more of Eric Garcetti's musical performance, and so we want to end with the mayor of the Los Angeles. Take it away. That was for sure. Awesome. That was so fun.